Hey guys, Crystal Hammett here, functional nutritionist, talking to you today about stress management through this crazy time. It's just needed. It's a topic that's um, maybe not as highly focused on as it should be right now as we're going through these really crazy stressful times. I am preaching to everyone that you need to be in control of what you're putting in your body. It's the one thing you have control of right now, whether that's food, supplements, or information. So make sure you're getting good, reliable information that's not putting fear in you, but rather just educating you so that you can have that awareness to be proactive. So I hope this is really helpful information for you you through this crazy time. Um, so we're going to talk about some things that maybe aren't as highly spoken about, and that's adrenal fatigue and the autonomic nervous system. So these are underlying stress, um, just path pathways and responses in the body that we want to address to make sure that we keep things under control. So I'm going to get into that about what it is and what we can do. I'm going to provide protocols, whether you're dealing with stress, anxiety, depression, insomnia, um, or of course, if you just want to take action and be proactive so that you don't get to a dangerous point with any of these ailments. Um, so I hope this information is helpful for you. I'm going to share my screen and I do have a PowerPoint presentation prepared. So let me get to that for you and start here. So addressing the autonomic nervous system and adrenal fatigue to manage stress is our goal here. Stress kills, it's no secret. Stress affects your body in many different ways. You can see from this diagram over here on the right-hand side, I'll get myself out of the way here. Um, it, it really affects every part of the body. It causes digestive issues, constipation and or diarrhea. Long-term stress definitely can lead to anxiety and depression and other mental disorders. Insomnia and poor sleep is a lot coming from stress fatigue and weight gain coming from adrenal fatigue that we'll get into, chronic headaches, decreased immune function, which how important is it right now to support our immune system, impacts hormone function, increases blood sugar, insulin, and A1C, as well as blood pressure, and increases your chance of all types of chronic sickness and disease. It does contribute to inflammation in the body. I want to talk about the increased blood sugar insulin A1C right now because I'm not gonna get into that in further slides, but the effect that stress has on diabetics and pre-diabetics is insane. You will see a tremendous jump, especially in your A1C if you're under high stress conditions. Stress is, is just so dangerous for this population. I have PCOS, which is an insulin con, uh, resistant condition that does have um, come with a lot of prediabetes or diabetes. A lot of us are diabetics. So I see a huge difference in my personal A1C numbers just from high stress situations. So I can tell you firsthand that this is very, very important to manage. So these um, stress functions have a lot to do with the autonomic nervous system. So these are going to go hand in hand also with the adrenals that we're talking about. So your autonomic nervous system is in two different phases, pretty much. It's more complex than what I'm getting into, but the two main things that I want to drive home is two phases, your sympathetic and your parasympathetic. We want to primarily be in that parasympathetic phase where you're relaxed and you're calm and the body inhibits and slows down many of the high energy functions. And so this is your rest and digest phase. Your sympathetic, on the other hand, that's your fight or flight. You're preparing the body for an intense situation, emergency situations. I don't know why this plays on its own. I'm sorry. Um, and it, so it's just helping you get into that response of just emergency. So we don't want to be caught up in that too long. The human nervous system is broken down here. You'll see the central nervous system. It's in the brain and goes down the spine, whereas your peripheral nervous system is going to be more your parasympathetic phase part. And this is all your neurons and your nerve endings and all other places in your body. 
So one way you can tell if you're in parasympathetic versus sympathetic, the easiest way to tell is looking at your eyeballs, looking at your actual pupils. If they are dilated, you are overstimulated and you're in that sympathetic phase. If they're normal, you're in your parasympathetic. When you're in parasympathetic, your digestion is much better. You're um, stimulating saliva, your bile flow, your gallbladder is working better. You're digesting your food better. You're probably not constipated and you probably don't have diarrhea. You are managing your blood sugar a lot better. Um, so there's just so many important functions that work better when you're in this phase. When you're in the sympathetic phase, you're most likely constipated. A lot of people feel that knot in their stomach and they're constipated by doing a few of like breath work and stuff that I'll talk about later, you can alleviate constipation just by switching over to the sympathetic, parasympathetic phase from your sympathetic. Um, so you're looking at GI issues, you're looking at heart um, increased blood pressure, you're looking at um, more difficulty even breathing, all types of stuff can be going on and the kidneys are having to work harder as well. Um, so there's a lot of different reasons. We do need to be able to switch back and forth as needed, but you want to primarily be in that parasympathetic phase. When you are in that sympathetic phase too much, when you're constantly in that really like, um, you know, fight or flight response, that chronic stress is really taxing to the adrenals. So this is a direct effect. The adrenal glands sit on top of your kidneys. Your kidneys even get overstimulated when the adrenals are overstimulated and they start to filter too much or work too hard. So the adrenal glands sit on top of the kidneys, produce hormones that regulate metabolism, help with managing your immune system, regulating blood pressure and that stress response. And all of this function, the main thing those adrenals do is produce cortisol. Cortisol is a natural hormone, a natural steroid in the body. So if you're overproducing cortisol, that's really just meant for this flight or flight. So if something is flying at your head, if you need to to slam on your brakes. If there's some type of emergency response, you need to run really fast from something. Your adrenaline and your cortisol kicks in and the adrenals really go to work and you get into that sympathetic phase and that's a really you know healthy function. But if you're caught up in that, this chronic stress starts to wreak havoc on the body like we're talking about earlier. Adrenal fatigue looks like this. Craving salt overly emotional, tired after exercise, like exhausted to where you're not recovering well, brain fog, weight gain, especially in the midsection because it is a natural steroid, that's where it stores. Here's the stuff we're talking about with trouble sleeping, depression, anxiety, morning fatigue and irritability, um, lightheaded when standing, frequently sick because it's compromising your immune system. So these are some things to look for. My biggest thing that I talk about is really how it messes up the time clock because you're supposed to be waking up with a healthy amount of cortisol. It's supposed to spike about 30 minutes after you wake up so you can get started with your day. It's supposed to slowly dip and before bed be pretty deplenished. And at that point, whenever you know it's really completely depleted before bed, it's your body's time to rest. Restore your cortisol all through the night and start over. If you are depleting your cortisol too often, too fast, too soon, your spike is not going to look like that. You're going to be like spiked in the morning. It's going to crash. So you're probably going to crash at between two or four in the afternoon. You might have to take a nap or rest. It'll start repl replenishing and then it'll start dipping to where really before bed, maybe at 10 o'clock, you may even get an energy spike. So if this sounds like you, you may be dealing with adrenal fatigue. You're probably pop popping up between two or four in the morning unexplained. So your cortisol is, is deplenishing with, is crashing within say two or four in the afternoon. And then you're popping up with it being replenished at two or four in the morning. So this is something just to look out for, for sure. If you have inability to manage stress, if things are more, you're more irritated and things that didn't used to be irritated, you are irritating you now. If you are startled by loud noises, slamming doors, loud TV, loud radio, and it gets like all knotted in your chest and it's hard for you to calm down, these are signs of adrenal fatigue. So look for this type of stuff, but definitely can address, we want to address anything before it gets too high out of control. Even if you are out of control, we can get you back in control. 
So there's solutions for these things. There's ways to get into that parasympathetic phase. There's ways to reduce your cortisol and manage that. And so that's what we're going to talk about in these solutions here. So stress management techniques. I really, really, really love breathing exercises. It sounds so simple and maybe even dumb to you, but man, it works. This is one of the quickest, best ways you can get into your parasympathetic phase. So at the 555 rule, I don't even know if this is a thing that other people do. I kind of made it up, but it might already be around. Breathing in for five seconds, breathing out for five seconds, and doing this for five minutes. It is definitely proven to help get you into that parasympathetic phase. Um, find a quiet spot, sit down, set a five minute timer, close your eyes and just breathe. It's just five minutes that can change your day entirely. Highly recommend doing this. I do it all the time. When I'm getting worked up, I stop and just do breath work and it gets me back into the right mode for sure. Meditation is huge. I do meditation quite often. I practice transcendental meditation and I have my mantra, my whole thing. But if you are a beginning meditator, if you're just wanting to get started, I highly recommend guided meditation. Headspace is a really great app that you can use. It's so popular. You can also look for others. A lot of meditation apps and companies that used to charge are now even giving it to us for free due to the circumstances and wanting to help out which is really cool. Um, so look for the meditation apps and do five, 10, 15, 20 minute guided meditations. Yoga, really helpful. And you don't have to go to a studio since all the gyms are closed right now. Pull up a yoga uh, video on demand on your TV or find one in your app on your phone and just do it in your living room. If you're a homeschooling parent right now, get the little ones involved. And this is your PE. Very de-stressing, very good proven for the body to help get into that parasympathetic phase and lower your stress levels. Reduce your ca caffeine and other stimulants. Um, Pray to God you're not drinking sodas right now, but if you're drinking too much tea or coffee, this can be overstimulating for your adrenals. Of course, it can affect your sleep. You want to stop drinking caffeine about six hours before your bedtime. It takes that long of a half-life to get through your body. If you are sensitive to caffeine genetically, some of us don't me metabolize it well. I don't, so I know my last coffee has to be before noon. So just be cautious of that. An exercise, but light exercise. Adrenals get taxed by physical exercise, emotional and physical, I said physical, physical, emotional, psychological stressors. So it may be adrenal fatigue was triggered on because you got in a car accident, because there was a really traumatic death in the family. Um, you had a surgery and physically your body was taxed. Maybe you're a marathon runner, a triathlete that overtrains, or maybe it was just that stress that compounded over time. You know, you own your own business. You're a mom and a homemaker, or not a homemaker, but you're supposed to be taking care of your home. Um, and you have all the stressors of the world on your shoulders. And over time, I definitely have to manage my adrenals because, oh my gosh, like it's so easy for that stress to creep in and things to start getting out of control. So it can be a slow build or it can be something traumatic. Um, I got off track, but it reminded me when I talked about exercise. <clears throat> so light exercise, light jogging, going for long walks, especially on nice days is so good for your you know, mental state as well as your physical body. Um, so these are types of exercises that I recommend if you have some symptoms of adrenal fatigue, do not over exercise. So targeted supplementation, put on your seatbelt here. It's going to get a little crazy. Okay. I most, most, most highly, highly, highly recommend that you take magnesium. It's a must. So minerals like magnesium and lithium are really effective for helping with not just getting into that parasympathetic phase, but also for stress management overall. Magnesium helps also blood sugar regulation. It helps with regulating your blood pressure. It helps with relaxing your body before bed, getting you in a deeper, better sleep. Um, it helps with stress management, period. Helps with 300 different biochemical functions in the body. So it's just a great foundational supplement that you really need to be taking. If you were to look at like pathways of how different vitamins are able and, and minerals and all types of nutrients are able to actually assimilate, absorb in the body work 
properly, go through different pathways and different SNPs, whatever the case is. Magnesium is one of those core foundational that everybody needs to take. Um, so make sure you're taking magnesium, especially before bed. Lithium is naturally found in our soil, but our soil is greatly depleted from all types of minerals. There's some places in the world where they have less depression because there is more lithium in their soil than others. If you're in Texas, you need to take some lithium because we don't got nothing in our soil. So Lysine Forte, I have a picture of it there from Biotics Research, is my absolute favorite. It has a pretty instantaneous effect. I'm going to get into specific protocols and dosing on the next couple slides. CBD and hemp oil, can't say enough good things about it. I take it all the time. It's everywhere around my house. It's in my purse. It manages stress. It helps with pain. It helps with, I mean, everything from mood to helping with, um, even I take it before a run because it helps with like uh, endurance training. It helps with so much. But if you want a pretty immediate effect of just kind of chilling you out, CBD or hemp oil, a full spectrum. Um, this is a 20 milligram, there's a 15 milligram. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Adaptogenic herbs like ashwagandha, or there's a blend that I love called Adrenatone. Ashwagandha, Adrenatone, licorice, um, rhodiola, all of these things adapt to your body's natural conditions, which is so awesome because if you're overproducing cortisol or underproducing, it'll help meet your body's needs. It works with that time clock that we talked about. So it'll act differently in the morning than it does at night. So I recommend breaking it up. Glandulars, these are cool because you're actually giving yourself animal glandulars that match our glandulars that produce the cortisol and produce thyroid, whatever the case is. So you're actually giving your body what it might be lacking or those extra tools needed to produce it on its own. And the ADB5 plus is awesome because B5 is the number one B vitamin that helps with adrenal fatigue. If you are depleted in B5, you most likely have sleep issues. So it has a high amount of B5 along with pretty much considered a multivitamin for your adrenals, all the different supporting vitamins and minerals that you need in there to help support your adrenals naturally with those glandulars. Um, peptide concentrate. If you've kind of tried a lot of other stuff and it's not really doing it for you, I recommend this peptide concentrate called de-stress. It is clinically trialed and proven to help people with stress management it is awesome. You get a pretty immediate effect with this one too. It's a tiny little capsule you can give to your pets, your kids, yourself. Um, pretty inexpensive as well. And it's, it's a very popular one the, with the doctor population I work with because it works so well and it's such a unique product. And can't not talk about inositol, my favorite B8, B vitamin. It's a derived from vitamin B8. You know, Valium is actually made from this. Um, from the components that they saw in inositol and then they compounded or synthetically made Valium. So inositol is a natural value and it's really calming, but especially it turns off brain chatter and racing thoughts. So whether those racing thoughts are leading to anxiety during the day or those racing thoughts when you hit your pillow at night and you're thinking about everything under the moon, it helps to shut that component down so that you can just focus on the task at hand or you can get to sleep. Um, it's something that again is safe to take for your pets, dogs, and kids and everybody you can think of because it's water soluble and just safe to take in high doses. Um, they have it in a pill or a capsule form. I call it a chill pill or natural volume. It doesn't cause grogginess or drowsiness, so you can take it during the day just fine. It's more about turning off that brain chatter. Here's some specific protocols. Stress maintenance. So if you just need to manage your stress, right now is a stressful time, but ordinarily you don't really worry about stress, you just want to maintenance. Magnesium, 300, 600 milligrams before bed. It can induce diarrhea if you take too much magnesium. There's seven different forms of magnesium. I like magnesium bisglycinate or magnesium chelate um, in the glycinate form. I recommend that because it doesn't induce diarrhea. It doesn't allow water into the stools. You can generally take more without getting any type of GI upset and it's the most highly bioavailable and absorbable. There's another powdered form also if you prefer powders that is really unique and special that Biotics Research has. So I'll link a couple of these 
uh, all these supplements I'll link somewhere so that you can see which ones I'm talking about. Adrenatone, um, this is the synergistic blend of different adaptogenic herbs. Taking one in the morning, two at bedtime just manages those cortisol levels naturally to keep you out of trouble for sure. Depressed moods, if depression is more of an issue than anxiety, I most highly recommend this protocol and I try to just pick about three things for each. You can take everything that was on that previous slide, I take almost every day. I'm a highly wound up kind of anxious person to begin with and all of this keeps me totally cool. So I do check my pupils when I start to get stressed. I'm like, whoa, am I in a highly like sympathetic state? Do I need to take more of this or can I take less because I'm cool right now? So you can manage that on your own, um, but just know you can literally take everything. But if you want to just focus on a few things, this is what I'm doing here. Back to your basics with magnesium. Lithium one to two a day. Lithium really, really great for helping with depressed moods and serotonin production. If you are on an antidepressant or any type of SSRI, you want to be careful. Generally, you do okay taking a minimal amount of lithium. There is such thing as serotonin uh, syndrome where you overproduce too much serotonin that can have an ill effect of making you more depressed. Very unlikely you'll get into that stage, um, but you can just be on the safer side and just take one lithium rather than two. CBD, again, really great for managing your moods. Um, a lot of literature a lot of clinical trials um, have been published um, in all types of studies showing that it, CBD absolutely helps with depression. When you're looking at really, you identified with that parasympathetic sympathetic, you're like, oh, I'm too high in the sympathetic phase. I need to get in a parasympathetic. What will get me there to help the best? Now you're looking at magnesium again as your foundational. Oh, that, oh yeah, lithium. Lithium is one of the best things you can do to get in a parasympathetic phase. It is phenomenal. There's a lot of studies that have showed help with that for sure. So definitely doing it before bed, but I would go ahead and try it twice a day. And then your bio ashwagandha from biotics research, one capsule twice a day, uh, bioavailable form of ashwagandha, very helpful for just managing your stress levels, cortisol levels, and getting you into that sympathetic parasympathetic phase you want to be in. And if you more identified with the adrenal fatigue we talked about, you're like, yep, that's me for sure. I'd go with, again, magnesium, do the adrenal tone with the adaptogenic herbs, and add in that ADB5+, plus, which is pretty much a multivitamin for adrenal fatigue with the glandulars. Poor sleep insomnia is your biggest issue. Go back to magnesium, relaxing your body before bed. Um, CBD full spectrum hemp before bed. Absolutely. You can do a capsule or the liquid form and inositol is where I would really recommend this, especially if some of your issue is that brain chatter and racing thoughts before bed. Also, if you wake up in the middle of the night, you don't want to take melatonin in the middle of the night because you'll be too groggy in the morning when it's actually time to wake up. So that's what inositol again is really good for because it'll help kind of shut your brain down, get you back to sleep, but it won't make you groggy. Um, five grams is a high dose, but I recommend that before bed in a powder form. You can do just one to two grams if you prefer in a capsule form. You can have the capsules and the powder because of course you don't want to mix powder in the middle of the night. If you wake up, you want to have those capsules by your bedside. You can just take with water to get you back to sleep. Um, but inositol tastes good. It literally tastes like sugar. So I'll do it to like even mix in with some of my other powdered vitamins that maybe don't taste as good because it'll enhance the taste um, or just drink it in water. It tastes like sugar water. So that's everything. I know this is a lot, um, but I hope that it was helpful. If you have specific questions, please let me know. I'm going to link all these products somewhere in a comment section because this will be on Facebook or I will send this out in my newsletter and have a link to all of these um, there as well. And then I'll have it on the blog of my website, hopefully too. Um, okay, guys, I hope everybody's doing well. My thoughts and prayers are with you and your family, sending good vibes your way. Stay inside, flatten this curve. Let's just do this together. But please reach out if I can help you with anything. I hope you have a beautiful day and I will talk to you later. Bye.